University Comics. I'm here with Steve Orlando. Steve, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. What's up? Oh, I'm doing well. Um, so you've got a lot of big projects coming up. Uh, one of the most interesting ones, I think, is Electric Warriors with Travel Foreman. A really out there concept. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about like where this where this is coming from? How long you've had this idea, and kind of what you want to do with the book? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, it's coming from. Uh this sort of thought about alternate futures in the DC universe and what an open palette that gives us, you know? Uh, the, the future isn't really set, not solidified until the main story catches up to it. So we thought, let's talk about our vision, uh, Travel and myself, uh, about Jack Kirby's DC Comics future. Let's bridge the gap between the great disaster and the Legion of Superheroes, and let's do it in a way that is uh, coincidentally and luckily very welcoming to new readers because everything is all new. If you are a DC reader, there's a lot extra you might take from the lore, but if you're not, you're not weighted down by continuity. These are all new characters that have been living in the DC universe that has been changed a lot by about 7,000 years that you haven't seen since the um, current continuity, since the main storyline. So we looked at it as an opportunity for Travel and I to build. Uh, you have all new characters, all new worlds, and uh, when, when DC comes to you and says, make up a decade for us, uh, you know, you say yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, so I assume you're a pretty big fan of Kirby and Legion 2. Um, how do you like hope to kind of marry those two areas of DC Comics that are both really popular but maybe don't get as much attention as some of the, you know, the Batman, Superman, that type of thing? Uh, well, you know, I think they get attention because there's a lot of raw creativity in both concepts, but sometimes they're so expansive uh, that there are people can sort of consider it a barrier to entry. Okay. Uh, thinking things like the Fourth World, thinking things like the Legion. Oh, let me just get into this. Oh my God, there's, thir there's 30 to 40 characters I instantly have to know. With Electric Warriors, the world's expansive, but we're focusing in uh, on the five specific characters, and specifically two Electric Warriors from Earth. Uh, within the story, every planet has one electric warrior representing them in trial by combat. Earth, uh, for the first time in the history of the Great Compromise, can't decide on a single electric warrior because we can't get along with ourselves. Uh, and so we have two. And so a lot of the drama in the book comes from the push and pull between our animal tribe's representative, uh, the animals from Commandy, still a big part of the planet, and our human representative. So even though it's a giant world, our entry point characters are so focused and so relatable. Hopefully that's a nice door open for you guys to explore the world. Cool, cool. Okay, so your other big project that I know you're really excited about is Martian Manhunter yeah. with Riley Rossmo. Um, I know, so you had mentioned, I think on Twitter, that this was the big project that you've been wanting to do for a really long time. Yeah. What excites you so much about Martian Manhunter? Uh, John Jones is my favorite DC character, you know, and one of my favorite comic characters in general. The chance to dig deep deeper into his history, his character, his story, both on Mars as, 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 as Chief Hunter John Jones, on Earth as Detective John Jones. Uh, I've never had an opportunity like that. It's a chance for me to show everyone why I love him and why that is, is his journey. Uh, it's, his, it's, it's a journey that is uh, one of personal struggle, it's one of personal pathos. When you're the last survivor of a culture, whether it's justified or not, you take a lot of responsibility on yourself. Uh, and he does that, and who among us is not guilty of, uh, shall we say, focusing on our negatives and overlooking our, our, our personal positives. Uh, his struggle is one to unify the man he is as Detective John Jones and the man he was as Chief Hunter John Jones on Mars. Uh, and, and I think that's an incredibly human journey. Probably one of the bigger ones as the, in the DC Pantheon. Because, you know, Superman was a baby or a fetus, depending on what year you read, when he left uh, Krypton. He didn't really know that world. Uh, Batman was a child. He couldn't protect his parents. Uh, and probably shouldn't have had to, but you see a lot, some interpretations of him that guilt comes from misplaced responsibility. Uh, John is an adult. He had a family he let down. He had a world he let down in his own mind. Coming to terms with that, finding a way to move forward and be a hero, I think that's an incredibly human journey. It's one I'm very excited to share with you along with Riley starting in December. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so you're, you've had a really, I think, distinct catalog of work at DC. You've kind of taken a lot of characters and sort of made them your own. Um, you recently wrapped up work on Justice League of America and a short run on Wonder Woman um, and carried some through threads through there. I also made Thriller, as that guy said. I did that. 
Um, are there any threads that you're hoping to carry on through your other books that you are okay to talk about? Any Anything that we might expect to see coming up in your new books? Well, I don't have books that are really set in the mainstream DC universe, okay. so, so there is that. But I will say that a lot of what is going to be in Martian Manhunter, we were able to thread it into my story in the Nuclear Winter special, which is coming out uh, this fall with Brad Walker. Uh, Superman 1 million and Martian Manhunter story that it takes place across two timelines but a lot of the Martian culture reverence in that will then blow up into the Martian Manhunter book so we are starting things a little early it's a beautiful eight page story my editors Alex Anton Dave Wilgos both got very emotional reading it so um, that's the DCU story you should be looking at to kick things off with Martian Manhunter Okay, okay. Uh, one last question I wanted to ask you. Uh, in your recent Wonder Woman run, you brought back the fan favorite character, Rustam. What inspired you to bring back Rustam for Wonder Woman? Well, I think a lot of it is what, so the, the, the inspiration for Rustam is in the resolution of Rustam. The tragedy of his character as it compares to Diana, because you see that if he had made different choices, if he hadn't been so nihilistic and jaded at the outset of his journey, he could have been standing side by side with Diana as a peer. He could have become a hero, but the true tragedy of him is his negativity. It is his outlook. And so, and, and a character like Diana who doesn't give up on people, uh, compared with Rustam, someone who has already given up on every person, uh, I think is very, very rich. The true sadness of him to me is that in a different world, he and Diana could have been friends if only he had been open to the idea that not everyone is bad from the outset. And, and, and Diana's view is the exact opposite. No one is ever completely bad. So there's no better character, really, to contrast and tell who Wonder Woman is than someone like Rustam.